What a quick spoiler alert. My immediate response from a G425 driver is it's the G400 Max, the new improved version of the G400 Max. First impressions. But first impressions can be deceiving. So what we do, we put this to the test, it's dry ball data. How far does this thing go? What are its spin numbers like? What's its carry, what's its launch? But then reality, back here out on the course, how does this thing start to perform in the hands of the average golfer? Is it the new improved version of the G400 Max? We'll find out. I've got a question for you on this one, and it's how do you measure forgiveness? Ping talks about this being the most forgiving driver that they have manufactured. It measures uh, something close to 10,000 in terms of an MOI score. Now I've got to be honest, I have no idea what that means, and I've no idea how you measure forgiveness. I'm baffled by it, but it's forgiving this drive, you know. So as with any of the new releases you're gonna see in the coming weeks, there's gonna be a marketing story that some of you get a little bit upset by, but I still think that you wanna see what the uh, technicians at each of these brands are saying they've introduced into these new models. And I think the story from Ping is, uh, well, it's a good one. It's really a progression from what I think was possibly the best driver on the market in the last few years. Uh, when you take everything into account, the G400 Max was an absolutely it was a real good average golfer's driver. It was really forgiving. And I think it got mass appeal. Everybody liked it who tried it. But they then introduced G410. And by their own admission, Ping uh, show that this wasn't as forgiving as the G400 Max. But what they did introduce was the sort of the movable weight system, which wasn't in the G400 Max, which allowed to dial in on custom fit. So that neutral draw and fade bias was built in. But by doing that and moving that weight, forgiveness was lost in certainly in the draw and the fade elements. So the G425 has addressed that situation. And what they've brought in is a movable mass weight, which is 26 grams. It only moves very minor in terms of its position. But what they say it does, it's the right amount of weight to shift, which will make an impact in terms of custom fit, but without a sacrifice in terms of forgiveness, which is the big deal that all of us average golfers are certainly looking for. And as you can see, just to back that up, what they're saying is in, the, uh, in its neutral position, it's 7% more forgiving than what the G410 was. And when you shift that weight into, if you need a draw or a fade bias, shifting that weight, it's sort of 16 and 20% more forgiving respectively in those two positions. So that's a big, big difference. As with uh, most releases from Ping, there are three versions, the LST, the low spinning version, SFT, which is um, a real sort of, anyone who's fighting against that slice, that fade, They've shifted, I think it's 26 grams of weight into that heel side. And again, they're producing what they claim to be some fantastic results in moving um, anybody that's hitting that ball out to the right. They're helping you to sort of straighten that up and we shall see. For me, in terms of this test, back out on the fairways at Conway, I've got the G425 Max product. That's what we'll be testing. So it's back out there. And uh, if any of this tech story uh, rings true in reality. So in all fairness, that is another fairway found. I've drove quite steady today, to be fair. But in terms of forgiveness, I can. the only way I measure it is when I record data, is that if we get a consistent ball speed across the club, uh, a consistent ball speed when reality is, I'm gonna find all over that club face because I'm not good enough to find the center. 
And that's how I measure forgiveness because it's still producing a ball speed with off center hits. I don't know if that's right or wrong. Who knows? That's not a bad ball. Decent ball flight. Probably gonna find that bunker, first bunker left. But again, I'll mention it again. The feel out of this thing is that little bit more muted. It's, it's less hard than what was in the, uh, the 410 models. And uh, that's another massive thumbs up on this driver. Right, so before we go any further, let's talk about how this thing looks. And as I always say, it's very much subjective, but from my perspective, I love the matte finish on the top of a driver crown. It's been simplified over the years from what the G400 Max was, with all kinds of patterns on top of this driver head. It's now uh, back down to the turbulators. They still exist. I'd prefer them if they didn't. I just like that clean crown, but the matte finish is good at address. From the underneath, in terms of shelf appeal, You've already seen from the intro clips, it's a great looking driver. They've gone again to kind of, it's all been toned down, which I think has been a good look for most manufacturers. I'm not uh, particularly keen on some of the bright colors that you're gonna see in the coming weeks. And I like what Ping have done. It's classy in the way it looks. It's very simple, it's straightforward. And this Alta CB black shaft that feeds into it, it just really looks good. So from a shelf appeal point of view, I think Ping have done a really good job. There is one test that we simply can overlook, and that is can the G425 find a fairway off the tee on the 17th at Conway? And trust me, I would never normally play driver, but this is the one final test. If it can achieve this, it can achieve greatness. That is the tightest fairway you'll ever see, and if you've got a card in your hand coming down 17, you want a pitching wedge in your hand, not a driver. But anyway, we're going to give it a go. I'm going to be aiming at the the yellow uh, group of whatever we're going to call it, gorse, with a little bit of cut. I'm holding my breath because that's close. Oh. It's not close, it's a fairway finder. I hope we pick the ball flight up. It started off just that little bit further left than I'd have wanted to, hence the holding of the breath. But what's really interesting with this club, I haven't seen it move a great deal in the air. Now, uh, I could be catching it fairly flush and everything's all square, but at the moment when I've seen a shot shape like that, a bit of left to right, it hasn't moved greatly. Um, I don't know, is that a thing? Is that a thing that the G425 is doing? Is that something I'm doing? I don't know, I don't really care. But all I can tell you is it has not moved a great deal in terms of, let's say, exaggerating spin. That's possibly a big positive. Right, so it's time for dry ball data. But if you're considering parting with your money and you've got the G410 in your hands, then what you really want to know is how do these two things compare? So that's what we're going to do. Get over to 4Golf. I'm going to collect dry ball data for the G425 and the G410 and see how much of a difference there actually is between these two models. Well, that's a decent ball with a G25, a uh, G410. I've got plenty of data collected. We'll analyze this at the end. I'm just gonna mention one thing that is um, noticeably different. Um, certainly inside, didn't take the G410 uh, out on the course. They muted the sound a little bit on the newer model. It's that little bit softer. And it was a criticism that I had of the 410 and it was a little bit harsh will make a big deal to many, but it's definitely been softened down a little bit in this uh, G425. Right, data's done. Right, that's it, test complete. We've got dry ball data in for both. And what you really wanna know is how has this performed? Is it any better than the G410? And I can tell you that it is. The dry ball data is always the telltale sign in terms of there's no arguing with it. I hit quite a lot of shots. Here's the averages for both. 
Swing speed, as you can see, remained consistent across. I'm always around that sort of 98, 99 area. That's the top end of my swing speed. But on average, we produced two, even three mile an hour. If I broke down every piece of data, but on average, roughly two mile an hour quicker ball speeds, which is really good because I would imagine that that is a tell, tail sign about what's happening across the club face rather than what's coming out of the middle of the club face where it will be fairly consistent and stable between the two as a comparison. So really good number there and that translates into overall carry which between the sort of lower spin number as well that we got out of this max product don't forget lower spinning than the uh, regular G410 from the previous model has produced a lower spin number, faster ball speed and that longer carry distance so overall performance really good but that's not really the thing for me distance is always important but where i think there's a real noticeable difference was in dispersion and i throw this chart in front of you now and again we could really you know you need to see hundreds of shots really to establish just how much tighter that dispersion would have been but for me from what i've seen out on the fairways and then this dry ball data you can see that those red uh, dots that you were seeing are that of the G425 and I've got to say the dispersion was the one thing for me that was the real positive both inside in terms of this dry ball data but more so maybe what I said out on the course where we seem to find a lot of fairways there was an exaggeration in terms of on, uh, spin um, the, and curvature on the ball Fair, kept it fairly straight it's about as best as I can do to provide you with uh, information that is relatable to. I can't get any more scientific than that. So for me, the overall assessment would be a real good product from Ping. They are, they are very consistent. They perform, and when I talk about they are, Ping are, they produce reliable product. They don't tend to release product unless there's a marked improvement. And I think there is only minor, but there are noticeable gains to be made in this product. Whether you then choose to upgrade from whatever model you're on now into this is entirely up to you. So the message would be, as ever, go out there, try it for yourself, and gain your own experience and opinions on what you think of the G425. But that's the first big one done for January. There's absolutely loads to follow, so make sure you've hit that not only the subscribe button, but also that notifications bell, because there'll probably be a video almost every day for the whole month of January. Right, stick with it, and uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you all soon.